the Yeti. And now I should be able to hear myself. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. That's great. That's freaking great. This is awesome. Let's put a, let's send a little link around about this uh, because, whoa, I don't know why that happened. Let's share. Um, All right, so I'm I'm on YouTube. I'm I'm live. Let's see what we got. Hey Wyatt, <laughs> first. Uh, let's make sure that this. Um, I'm getting text messages. My phone is blowing up. This is insane. This is just insane, everybody. I, I gotta talk about this image. I gotta talk about what we're seeing here. I've got it open in Photoshop here because it can allow me to do something like this. Where whoops, uh, this where I like you know actually I should move this down here because I think I, yeah, whoops, let's go back. Uh, do, 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 do. I've like tried to make them a little bit close to each other here, the HST image, there we go. Now you can kind of see a little bit. Um, bup, 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 bup. And this should be a little closer. Yeah, there we go. You know, now you can see as I go back and forth, but this is an image that we had for a while uh, of this field that came out today, and it's a pretty good deep image. It's not one of the, you know, it's 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 fairly deep. It's not one of the deepest we've ever had in, with HST. But then today they just released an image uh, that's so rad. <laughs> it's so much better. Look at this thing. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, I hello Wyatt. I am just over the moon about this, if you could probably tell. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna talk about it for a little bit. Uh, and explain what we've got, what's going on here. Look at this! Look at this galaxy! Like, look at what we knew about it was this. And now we know that. <laughs> this, this is all we knew. It just looked like that. We like, oh yeah, a little fuzzy blob right there. Oh, actually, it's an incredibly red, beautiful galaxy. Very dusty, probably got some old stars in it. Boom! Like, th it's absurd to me. There's so much going on in this image. Like, and this is just, you know, about 12 hours worth of data all combined. And like, we're going to, oh my gosh, we're going to have so much going on. So, uh, like, I, I just, I, I need to not just giggle and look at this. So, okay, let's back up. Let's back up. What are we seeing here? What are we seeing? Well, this is a, a field called SMAX. Uh, SMAX, what is that? Why did I always forget that? 0723. And, and SMAX stands for Southern Massive Cluster Survey. And it's a... You know, it's a it's a survey that was done of some massive, you know, clusters, obviously, uh, of galaxies, and 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 you know, there's there's a big bright galaxy right here, which is very massive, and it has a pretty cool thing around it, which are all these little arcs. And the reason it was chosen originally was because of these arcs, and these arcs are literally just like a magnifying lens of gravity. This this galaxy here has a bunch of mass in it. Some of it you can see, most of it you can't. It's dark matter that you just can't see. And the galaxies behind the, the this, you know, way in the distance behind this, their light should be going out in this direction, but the gravity pulls it in. So if I, if I do this, it pulls it in and it comes towards our eyes. And so it looks like it's coming in these crazy arcs. It's like looking through the bottom of a wine glass, just making these crazy arcs, right? And so this is the HST image that exists. It's a multiple filters. You can tell it's multiple filters because look over on the edges here. You can see that when you take images, you have to kind of change the way the telescope rolls over time because of how it's orbiting. And so you end up getting, you know, images that aren't exactly right on top of each other. So there's a red, a green, and a blue image. And you can see the green image up here. There's a blue image. Uh, and I don't know if we, yeah, there's the red image down here, you know. And this was chosen because there's lots of other deep fields we could do. There's the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field. But they chose, they had to choose a field for their first image that wasn't already being in the queue for future observations. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field will be observed later this year. And so they chose this one because it's, you know, this was not one a lot of people thought they would choose. It's, you know, a pretty cool lensing field. And with NearCam, the instrument I work on, they took six filters, uh, wideband filters ranging from 0.9 microns, so right in the near infrared, all the way out to 4.4 microns, so the edge of what near cam can take a picture. So it spans the whole gamut, and they took you know about two hours per filter essentially, and they combined all the data, and they got this. 
and like just the difference between the two is absurd uh and so you're seeing this in a different wavelength this is this is a wavelength i think this is acs so i think this is optical wavelengths and then this is just infrared wavelengths but like if we zoom in you know first off these crazy arcs that you could see in the in the hubble image you know like there's an image here and there's a counter image here this is the same galaxy this is a galaxy this is the same exact galaxy except you're seeing it lensed twice there's actually you know you can see the bright part and a little less bright there's a bright part a little less bright kind of the same thing but like boom it's beautiful and you can see all of the image stretching out that's not like gas pulled between two galaxies that's just the, the the arc of the image which is what makes this really complicated to look at here's the main galaxy here um look at this one what, what, what are you you know I, I i don't think this is merging galaxies i think these are just two galaxies that happen to be coincident like you know if i if i did this and, and this you know they're not next to each other but one of them looks like it's next to each other um i should make sure that i can see if anyone's asking questions in the chat um like it's it's crazy what's going on if you have questions please ask them this is the time to do it i love this one right here look at this weird pancake this like melty clock of a galaxy this is a galaxy that's on the other side of this one it's another thing that's lensing the big one's not just lensing this galaxy here is lensing you know you can actually see there's it's happening up here as well uh, and i can show you something that shows the lensing um model that was done for this but you can see this galaxy here. If I if I change this, you can see that it's like barely seen. Yeah, space to what Tyler. Um, it's pretty incredible, and you can just see that like you know like look at all of the weird. It this is probably a spiral galaxy. You know like the one that we were looking at up here. It's just all warped, all warped and weird. I I think this is my favorite thing that I've seen in the last like 20 minutes looking at this, which is just nothing galaxy, nothing galaxy. It's not exactly oriented right. But like, because uh, I'm doing this in Photoshop, so I'm not, you know, correctly aligning everything really well. Um, but there's thousands. Like, what I really like is we could just choose some region. So let's, whoops, let's choose some region, like here, right? You know. All right, so here's a region of this guy. Don't really see much there. You know, uh, this is noise. Here's a galaxy. Here's a, probably a galaxy. Here's one. And when we just go look at that region, which we didn't have galaxies before, boom. All these dots are galaxies. Boom, 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 boom. These are just interesting bigger ones. This is probably a lens dark right there. Like, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit shifted. I'd have to shift it again because it's not exactly the same scale. I've just got it all in Photoshop. What's the bright spot in the picture? This big one, this one right here, this is just a star. A star in our own galaxy. I don't look at it much because it's an interloper. It's something way, way close. Everything else is behind it. It's got this crazy, like six seven eight pointed star because the light is going through the jwst mirrors off the mirrors and into the instrument which is causing it to have this crazy diffraction pattern uh hubble's diffraction pattern was very different you could see that it was this and there's another one here that is because of the green one was at a different rotation angle but this is this is because hubble has a circular mirror that has these arms that hold up the secondary that look like this and that what, what caused this but if you have a crazy three-armed thing holding up the secondary mirror and your mirror is a crazy set of hexagons you get this this insane nightmare snowflake is what i call it the galaxy to the left of the red one this 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 pretty this pretty one yeah it is pretty cool right and like not much we kind of knew that it was a little bit elongated here but whammo here's uh let's see what else do i like um whoop, 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 whoop. i keep mistaking the zoom around this is john's galaxy uh john boyce uh called it earlier i'm not letting anyone else call galaxies he got in the one that's what his he gets to um i like this galaxy here because it has a very bright point source in the center which we kind of knew you could see that it's bright there and that bright point source has actually got the little spikes and you know hey maybe it's an agn right look at this red one right here oh look at this what doesn't even appear And Feng Wu Sun, one of the uh, folks here at U of A, he identified this galaxy as a, uh, you know, about redshift two to three. So, you know, maybe nine uh, billion light years distant. Uh, and it's just really dusty, really, really dusty, which is very, very cool to see. Uh, like, I am pretty, pretty stoked about, about looking at this. I, I'm going to show you guys one here that also doesn't appear. And I want you to keep an eye out for it. Let's see if I can find it again. It's kind of annoying that I keep losing it. Where, 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 where is it? I've got it over here. It's underneath this guy. Oh, there it is. Look at this weird red one. Let's not do that. That's, we don't want to do there. Is this red one right here? You see that? Also doesn't appear. 
right? A lot of these ones don't appear, but that one is really red and it doesn't appear. And when it's really red in the JWST image, it's either because it's very dusty or because it's got older stars that you're seeing, or in this case, this one is red and doesn't appear at all in these because it's likely pretty far away. And I think this one is one of the farthest ones in the image. I think this one is probably from about 500 to 600 million years after the Big Bang, a very old little galaxy uh, here, which, you know, look at that. Look at those little pixels. This is what really far away galaxies look like. They look like little blobs. Um, but I would be willing to bet that you should probably keep an eye out on that one for tomorrow as well. Um, Cause like, it's a pretty, it's a pretty incredible uh, image uh, or object. What else we got? What else we got? Are there questions? I should keep looking for questions right here. This is this is this is great. Clearly, technology now. Well, the thing is, is HST this HST like is a fantastic telescope that's still working really well. The thing is, is that you need a really cold telescope that is operating in the infrared to really see a lot of this stuff. Man, I'm sad that we didn't see what this thing is over here. Uh, that the image, you know, like this is a cold telescope operating in the infrared, so it like it really allows us to see, like, you know. There's two nuclei here. And the thing is, is if you look at the way that a universe, a galaxy's light goes, it, it as you go to farther and farther distances, the galaxy's light is red shifted, meaning it's pushed to longer wavelengths outside of what Hubble could see. And what's left is a lot of the ultraviolet, which is from young stars. So you're seeing in the, in, you know, that there's, there's some star activity here, but like, really, this is what the galaxy probably looks like in optical, you know, at these red shifts. It's, it's really something else. There's so many cool looking things here. There's, you know, Look at this little Cheeto. <laughs> Just boom, nothing, right? Like, hardly anything. I this And this is an image, like, there's a lot of deep fields that are like this. Now, there's a lot of very, very deeper fields that have a higher, you know, a lot, but, like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm blown away. Look at this spiral galaxy. Look at this thing. Multiple arms spiraling in a, what, you know, in counterclockwise fashion in towards the center there. And the best that we had was that, it, you know, we kind of thought that it was like that. You know, you could see that it was a spiral galaxy, but like, boom. I could do this all day. I uh, I am on the NearCam team, so I've been seeing NearCam images, but we were not part of the team that, that saw these images. Uh, and so we are just as excited. All of us met today in this big room and waited for 45 minutes of the same song over and over until President Biden did the announcement or something like that. Uh, and so we're really excited about seeing all of these things because they are they are pretty wild. Especially because this is just an image from one instrument, from the instrument I work on, from NearCam. And I'm pretty sure that this is just one NearCam field of view. NearCam takes images that are twice as big. But I bet that they just wanted to focus on this for right now. So, you know, it, it should be that there's another entire region off to the side here that's not focused on the same thing that, like, you know, I, I, I want to see that as well. Um, God, what is this? What is this weird hazy thing here? I have no idea. Um, uh, also down here is the uh, galaxy that kind of looks like JWST with the mirror on top of the sun shield, which are the galaxies. But yeah, so so this this telescope, the one that is that is showing this is the is JWST, which is a six and a half meter telescope that launched in December. I work on the main camera. Uh, this is the first image, the first public image that was released uh, today uh, in color. Uh, there have been other images, but they've been single filter images showing how well it's focused and stuff like this. And this is the first one to really, really go into detail into, into what, what, you know, what kind of stuff we can expect in the future. And tomorrow morning, if you've never, if you haven't heard of this and this is your first time, this is awesome. But tomorrow morning, I would look out because at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific and, and where I live, they're going to have more images and I assume more spectra and other things showing from the other, the other telescopes. Um, what is it? What a weirdo. What, what are you? I, I have no idea why this galaxy looks like this. Is it another arc? Is it just a weird, like, I don't know. This is why I study galaxies. Because, you know, you can look at them as just individual points and stuff like that. Or you can, you know, think of them as, like, individual weird mysteries. We looked at that one before. We already looked at that one. Um, other questions? This is really good. I'm happy that we have some, some folks watching. Uh, I haven't streamed in a while on my YouTube because I've been really busy with this all and, and working on commissioning and stuff. Uh, gosh, these arcs are so beautiful and they're so complicated. Um, here, let me actually open up. Beep, 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 beep. Let me open up this thing to show off the lensing model. Um, from Karen Sharon. 
an astronomer who worked on the field uh, and made a great lensing model. Uh, here we go. Okay, dragging this down. Do, 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 do. And now I'm going to do another internet. Uh, let's do this one. Boom. All right. So uh, we need to move this up above here. Boom. All right. So here is the lensing model. So if I turn this off, I can actually line things up a little bit better so that it kind of makes more sense. Um, but da, ba, 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 put this in the middle. And if I kind of blink this, yeah, I have to I have to zoom out, don't I? Where are the other galaxies? Yeah, they're up there, right? Yeah, it's a little bit awkward because it's kind of twisted, but this this right here is the galaxy with the whoops 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 whoops. whoops. This right here is the galaxy up in the corner. If I if I come back over here, it's it's. It's, uh, I need to remember where things are. It's this one right here, right? And so this big galaxy has a, an amount of gas or, and dark matter and, and material that is kind of elongated like a cigar. And Karen did the modeling. This red arc here is an important curve. These are all curves here that show the lensing. And so, you know, if you were to kind of draw, draw, draw a line uh, down this yellow thing right here, you can see that uh, on the near cam image, a lot of things are mirrored across this because this is a very important curve in the modeling. And you can also see there's red around here and red around this because this object is lensing this galaxy right here. And this is also has enough mass and it's causing lensing as well. And so if we turn this off, you can see in, in the image here that like across that is these two and these two, you know, this is the lensing direction. And these are things where a mirrored image is on either side of this, which is pretty, pretty wild. Right, but like, this is another thing where I'm pretty sure, like, you know, you can also see there's lots of little lensed arcs throughout the whole thing. Everywhere you look, little lensed arcs. Look, look at this one, like a string of pearls. Isn't that beautiful? And again, if we go and turn it off, Hubble saw it barely, maybe. Like, it's ridiculous. So we do know what the images will be of. Let's let's take a look. I'll show you my, my Twitter thread Twitter thread from yesterday, um, and we can talk about those and get you excited for those. Um, all right, my Twitter account, and we can scroll down because I've just been talking about this whole thing all day, all day, just continually talking about this. I'm very excited. Here we go. Boom. Here's what we're gonna talk about. So let's put this actually down below me. Here are the first targets. The one I just talked about is this SMAX 0723 field, right? That is the field that, you know, but we're also expecting to see, so this is something I do if you've never watched me before, this is the Kevin Pointer. We're gonna see the Carina Nebula, the Southern Ring Nebula, Stefan's Quintet, and then a spectrum, I think, probably of the atmosphere here. So let's go through these. Are you ready? Are you ready, everybody ready? Let's go. Here's thing number one, which is the Carina Nebula. And here's a picture of the Carina Nebula. Wow. It's enormous. JWST probably can't take a picture of this whole thing. Really, really big. And what you're seeing here is a cloud of gas and dust around baby stars, much closer than the image I was just showing you. This is a Hubble image I'm showing you here. It's not a JWST image. It's just Hubble uh, and you know an existing, actually this is a ground-based image. Let me, I, let me take that back. This is a ground-based image. I'll show you a Hubble image in a second from a region that's like right here, little tiny region. Like the near cam field of view would be, you know, this little tiny thing with my finger that I'm doing right here, real tiny. So, you know, they could do something along here. I'm gonna show you what it might be because I don't know that is, this is a picture from Hubble of that region I was just showing you in the optical of a region where baby stars are inside of this thing here. That's why you're seeing light leaking out from regions of gas and dust that are hiding baby stars in there. Wild, right? Uh, this is called the Mystic Mountain. And let me show you what it looks like when Hubble took a picture of it in the infrared. Are you ready? It looks like this. So you can see that this region right there, can you see that right up there in this little, like, you know, the, the little tongue that the mountain that comes up there? That's this part and the little mountain that goes down there. So they could focus on something like this. And then you see, you know, that if in this image, you can't see where all the stars are, but look at all of the stars. These are stars that you could not see because dust was blocking the way. So this could be what we see tomorrow. Something like this, where you're seeing a lot of the dust right through it and all the baby stars. Or maybe they use JWST and one of its long wavelength instruments, MIRI, 
one of the long way instrument to take a picture of the dust kind of like they're doing here but use it with the h with the near cam image to like show you all the baby stars being born i don't know but the carina nebula you know which this is the whole this is the whole of the carina nebula that's target number one right so you're going to see a carina nebula picture tomorrow or maybe multiple i don't know the next thing Oh, here's another thing in the Carina Nebula that I think is really funny. Uh, I really like this. So this is a Bach globule, a big glob of dust in space where baby stars are being born, and it's very rude. The next thing is this guy, or lady, or non-binary, I don't know. This is the Southern Ring Nebula. It's also known as, like, the figure eight, uh, and it's a 2,000 light years away. It's what happens when a star, like our sun, reaches near the end of its life. It will puff off the, the core will get very hot, it'll heat up, and the outer layers of the star will puff off into space, leaving the naked core, which is carbon, about the size of the Earth, and that carbon star will glow and light up this region here. And we're probably going to see this, and it's going to look way wild compared with this. This is an older Hubble image. I bet in the infrared this is going to look incredible. I bet you're going to see complexities upon complexities. I am I am really excited. I I don't know enough about planetary nebula to know what they're going to look like. I think we've looked like we looked at them in the infrared. Here's a planetary nebula in the infrared from the Spitzer Space Telescope which has this crazy wild hypercolor and you can see look at all of the complexity. It's like looking at the human eye. It's like really ridiculous. So I'm expecting something like this at way better resolution, you know. Uh so the Carina Nebula just to give you an idea of like this this right here, you could put the sun on one side and the nearest star a couple light years away would be over here. So this is the number of light years across, okay? So if this is the number of light years across and it's this tiny thing, this is many, many thousands and thousands of light years across. It's a really, really big thing. Uh, and, you know, so this is, uh, you know, a star here uh, with a couple other stars. This is not the white dwarf in the center. It's actually another star nearby, but like, you know, this is... This is a pretty cool thing. Um, and then again, here's a different one. This is called the Helix Nebula, a different uh, uh, planetary nebula. These are called these dead remnants of stars. The next thing that's going to look at is this, which is Stefan's Quintet. Quintet means five. There are five galaxies here. There's one right here. There's one right here. There's one right here. And there's actually two. One, two. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five. These are galaxies. Four of them are crashing into each other. This one, this one, this one, and this one are crashing into each other. But this one right up here is not. This one actually is uh, a foreground one. They're all doing all their fun dance out here. And there's one that's way, way, way in front of it. But it kind of looks like it's nearby because it's really hard to tell distances. And it's like, I'm part of it. And it's like, no, you're not. You're way far away from it. And so this one here, you can actually see like individual groups of stars that are a lot harder to see because these are farther away. It's like nine, you know, 30 million light years. And this is like hundreds of millions of light years away. Um, this uh, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful set of, of galaxies here. And in the infrared with Spitzer, which doesn't have the best resolution because it was a smaller mirror, it looked like this. Uh, and this is pretty cool. You're seeing a little bit of optical as well, but this like crazy thing, it's tilted on the side from the last picture. But this green thing, this little dragon here is like a shock wave, we think, like really... Really incredible. Um, you can see older stars here, but what I'm probably likely to, to, to see is that we expect galaxies to look like this. This is what galaxies look like, because Hubble showed us what galaxies look like. But in the infrared, they look really different, and I'm expecting that when we see them like this, they're going to look really crazy. I like this little smiley face, too. They're going to look really different, like unlike what you might expect with galaxies to look like. And I think that this might be a real incredible image, you know, a, a higher resolution version of this where we can really understand what's going on with the gas and the dust in these galaxies and the old stars. Um, so Stefan's Quintet, take a look for it. Next, I said, was, Steph, was, was this field, and we just went through this field, right? We just talked about it, and it's awesome. It looks, uh, the actual image, whoops, the actual image looks like this. It's uh, rad. You can see that, you know, I, I showed a version of this image, you know, that was in black and white. I didn't show the color version, but, like, you know, I was like, wow, look at all these. This is a couple days ago when I tweeted about this. Look at all these. I wonder how they're going to look. And now I can just tell you exactly how they're going to look, uh, which is wild. They're going to look... Like this. <laughs> like, this is rotated, but, like, that's exactly what they look like. This is what they look like with JWST. It's wild. It's wild. The next thing uh, to move on, the next one that we're going to talk about is uh, this object, which is an artist's rendition here of a planet called WASP-96b. 
And Wasp 96b is an interesting planet, and I'll talk about why in a second, but it's a planet that's like Saturn to Jupiter sized, and it is a transiting planet. Which means, I'm going to do this. I did this on Twitch yesterday. Uh, where's my phone? Where is my phone? Uh, I need my phone. For this. It's really important. I heard it. Here's my phone. All right. So this is not a fun thing to do, but look at this. Right? We've got a star, host star. Actually, we've got a star, which is the light here, and we've got a planet, which is this little, the tip of this little pen here. Okay, this old stylus, this pink Kirby stylus that I have. This is a star. Watch as this thing goes in front of the star. Boop. And then it goes behind the star, and then it goes in front of the star. Boop. And then it goes behind the star, and then it goes in front of the star. You can't see it when it's not, you know, you can't really see it, right? You can't see it at all. But when it goes in front of the star, the star's light goes down by a little bit, right? Boop. Boop. Isn't that neat? And in the process of doing that, that's called a transiting exoplanet. Oh yeah, I'm on Twitch. I'll I'll I'll, I'll link that here. Um, I mostly just play dumb video games. Uh, there's my Twitch account. Um, <laughs> when the planet goes in front of its host star, the light goes down. The light dims, and we can characterize that. And also, we can look at how the light goes through the atmosphere of the star as it's going in front of the star. Planets going in front of the star, going through the atmosphere, like you know, just on the very edge atmosphere, and tell what is in the atmosphere and so people did this with this with existing observations and you can see it's a mess all these points are a mess right and they are showing as a function of wavelength a sodium feature in the atmosphere that there's sodium in the atmosphere of this planet very cool what's really cool is that the lines here you can see this pink line which is haze does not fit the data very well the red one fits the data pretty darn well these points they don't agree. They're above the blue points over here. So the pink line is not a good model. And that's a haze model that says all these crazy clouds. Exactly, right? And so this is a cloud, uh, you know, this Nikolai, uh, Nikolai Nikolaev and, and team discovered that this planet actually doesn't seem like it has a lot of haze and clouds in its atmosphere, which means you might be able to see into the atmosphere. And a couple weeks ago, Magruder et al., actually took a spectrum of this out at wavelengths that NearCam can, can and, and, and JWST can see, but it's really messy. Look at these data points, which have really, they're all over the place. You know, they don't fit the models very well. They're, you know, I mean, I, it's great. I shouldn't be sassy to Magruder. This is a really good spectrum for what we have, but I'm willing to bet we're gonna see a version of this tomorrow, something like this that, you know, is gonna be better. I'm hoping, I don't know what it is. I think it could be something like this and it's, it's a really amazing, uh, spectrum that will show all these wiggles tell you about water and methane and all these things in the atmosphere, which is really incredible. So those are the things that we're expecting to see, right? So let's go back up to the first thing here. That's what you're going to expect to see tomorrow. That's your, your primer to get in. And, and I, I might go streaming again tomorrow on, on some point, some place just to talk about the other images, because if I could get, you know, as much time as I have about just looking at this thing, like there's so much to be said in this thing. It's such a beautiful image. I like, I need to print this thing out and put it on my wall. Um, I really like having it lined up with the, with the JW, or the HST image here because it really allows you to like, just see what we've done as a human culture. It's really incredible. Any other questions? Any other questions? I don't hear any. I'm running out of voice, and I'm also really, really, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tired because it's been a really crazy day. Um, like, so if you don't have questions, oh, Yoko, all right. How many of these galaxies did Mario visit? Oh, Mario just visited one, Super Mario Galaxy. That's all he visited, and, and I don't know if it's in this image. I think it's in a different field. Um, uh, if it were here, I think that, you know, maybe it's the, the, the red cap on top of this one. It's a me. Thank you so much for playing my game. Wahoo! Welcome to the galaxy. That's a good question, Travis. How large an area was the image today? I saw someone saying it's like a grain of rice from Earth. Like, it's a grain of rice held out at arm's length, right? So if you had a little grain, not a grain of rice, like a grain of sand. Right, like a really, really tiny, tiny little image. Um, let's actually, here, let me, let me, 
I've got it over here on my other computer, and I want to take. Screwed up the stretch. There we go. Uh, so if I do this and then look at the radius of this in arc minutes, so it's about two arc minutes across. So it's essentially one near cam field of view. So two arc minutes across. Now let me explain what an arc minute is. An arc, a, you know, if you have a circle, the circle has 360 degrees around it, right? 360 degrees. Just put a circle up into 360 degrees. If you take one of those degrees, you can split that up into 60 arc minutes. And there's two arc minutes. That's what this field is. Two arc minutes. Let me turn this off. Two arc minutes across. So one near cam field of view. Um, if we look at like the full moon here. Uh, I can find an image hopefully that shows what the full moon looks like and yeah so the full moon across if I turn this back on whoops turn myself off the full moon across you can see up here it when it's closest it's 33 arc minutes if it's farthest is 29 arc minutes right and you can see the difference when you know when it, between it's closer or not and like you know 33 so we're, we're talking like in this one you know less than a tenth Right, so like it's this little tiny region on the sky. That's what you're seeing, right? Like what my fingers are showing. And so essentially, when you look at the moon next, think about a tiny, tiny region, which is a grain of sand held at arm's length off into the sky, a grain of sand, that's the, the size of the region on the sky. In actual space, it's a little bit bigger because, and it's complicated because of the way that you could imagine like, you know, uh, it's like a big tube of, when you're looking out uh, of space. I heard JWST. Does the cluster have a name? Yeah, the, the, this group of stars, this this right here, is called SMACS, S-M-A-C-S-0723. S-M-A-C-S-0723. SMACS, which is the Southern Massive Cluster Survey, 0723. Other question. Um, I heard JWST will change how we understand the universe. From this image, can we see more galaxies and see them better? How do we expect this to change things? Well, okay. Let's start with what I with that that idea of like you know the difference between this one and this one, right? Like if we if we go back and forth. So when we do observations of the universe, we've used Hubble. It's an incredible telescope, and it's given us a really good view into the understanding of the distant galaxies. The thing is, is that the reason that you can't see the galaxies between these, like if I if I turn this on and is is partially because. JWST is more sensitive and you know and, and and you know has gone deeper in that way than this image shows but also Hubble has a limit on the wavelength that it can see it can't see farther than a certain wavelength and, and JWST is designed to see out farther much farther than what Hubble can see and that matters because the universe at the really far away distances is pushed out is redshifted outside of what we can see with our eyes outside of what Hubble could see pushed into the infrared, where JWST is great. This is why I'm making such a big deal about galaxies like this one right here. The reason that Hubble did not see this galaxy right here at all is because this galaxy, if it is a really, really distant galaxy, this galaxy wouldn't appear in this image because Hubble wasn't sensitive at those wavelengths to see it. And the fact that it's really red in, in, in the JWST indicates that it's likely a pretty distant galaxy. And this is the thing, is that Hubble was therefore limited in its ability to see really far away galaxies, especially if they're really dusty. And so Hubble just gave us a view of the distant universe, and the distant universe, the far away universe, is also the young universe. So what this image is giving us a hint at is this idea that pretty soon we're going to have the ability to understand the universe from the beginning of galaxies where Hubble couldn't see these objects JWST will hopefully see them in droves and that's important because early galaxies are the ones that they were built in with pristine simple elements just the first top two of the periodic table like if I if I show this uh, this here uh, periodic table with origins very famous very famous table here love this this origin of the you know periodic table turn this right back on Bink. up here if i click on this again up here and up here with the light gray where it says big bang 
That's what was created in the, in the Big Bang. All of these other things, low mass stars, exploding white dwarfs, nuclear decay, cosmic... These require stars, man. They require stars to make it. And in the early universe, there wasn't stars, there wasn't galaxies. Something happened where stars and galaxies were made. And when stars and galaxies were made, low mass stars could make lithium, strontium. Exploding white dwarfs, eventually when stars died, they created all the orange. All the yellow was exploding massive stars. You know, carbon and nitrogen, low mass stars, like the stuff that's in your fingers, required low mass and stars to barp, burp the carbon out. It required massive stars to explode out. That required stars to live and die in the early universe. And we can see that process. We can watch as the universe built up all of these elements. Very cool. Right? Like, I like to point this out that gold here, AU, is exploding neutron stars, question mark. That's like two stars late in their life, which are crashing into each other, just so you can have gold. Just so I can hold silver. I'm holding silver right now, and it's low mass stars, and then also really, really crazy high mass stars, or like, you know, neutron stars crashing into each other. This is something that JWST will see, because we can look at galaxies and start assembling them and saying, which are the farthest, which are the closest, and what are their properties? What's going on with their chemical properties? If we look at them as a function of wavelength, if we look at their little chemical fingerprints and tell how they built the universe up atom by atom. Pretty cool. Um, this image, I think the micrometeorite happened well after or before this image was taken. So the micrometeorite everyone's worried about, it affected one of the mirrors. It Essentially, we had a threshold with which we needed to meet for how sensitive and how, you know, the resolution, all this stuff. And we well beat it, just super well beat it, out of the park. And the micrometeorite put it up a tiny bit. Like the micrometeorite like, was like, well, it's not as perfect as it was right before, but we're gonna get micrometeorite hits. It's the a tiny, it's like, it's it's not like you're like, oh no, like it didn't break one of the mirrors, all the mirrors work. It's just something where the mirror had like an impact that caused it to make it so that it, we couldn't focus it exactly as well, but it's just, it's, it's essentially like we've just got a new pair of incredible glasses and now there's like the tiniest little scratch up in a corner where you're like, eh, you know, now, uh, but like not even a, it's, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. That's a good question. A lot of people worry about the micrometeorite. You shouldn't be worried about the micrometeorite. It, like this should teach you that like, you know, we have resolution that is just wild. Whoops, let me keep doing that thing that you need to stop doing. Like, you know, wild resolution compared with you know where where we are you know like just looking at john's galaxy here like just look at the difference you know we could but it's just like it's incredible it's just and this is just one of the first ones we've got 20 years of this telescope what questions do you hope are answered first um you know i don't know this image is going to be something that i think is like there's going to be other images that are going to come out pretty soon uh, of deep fields that I think are going to probably do a better job. This was a kind of publicity thing. There's going to be some science that's going to be done obviously on it, but I think that really one of the big things is we're going to understand uh, within the next couple weeks, hopefully and months, uh, about a big question about the universe's uh, star formation rate density. Uh, so let me let me explain that. Um, I'm going to show you a plot. Plots are gross. I apologize, but you know it's an important plot to show. Um, here's the plot. Uh, we're gonna look at it right here. Uh, all right, let's explain this. The universe now is on the left side of this plot. The universe in the you know early time was on the right side of this plot. This is star formation rate density. It says log, ignore that, m star, mass of a sun per year every year per box of universe that's in a big giant cubic megaparsec which is means is how many stars are being born every year in a chunk of universe if you just take some random chunk of universe how many stars are born in that chunk of universe and how many stars were born a billion years ago and how many stars are born five billion years ago and how many stars were born in that chunk of universe 10 billion years ago right and so you're seeing the age of the universe all the way stretching back early in time let's just look at this blue line the red line is is corrected for dust the blue line is telling us that right now the universe doesn't make that many stars per year in a cubic box huh but as we go back in time it makes more and more and we get this region here between redshift two and three which is you know when the universe was three or four billion years old where the universe was just making stars it's the wild west we call it cosmic high noon 
real exciting time. And then it kind of drops off because the universe was assembling from the right to the left and making more stars and something turned it off. The big question is what turned it off? That's something we'll JWST will solve. But another thing is, notice here that like these points over here, there's not a lot because there's not a lot of galaxies over at these high distances. And so I'm really worried that it might follow this orange line and I'm hoping it more follows the blue line because if it follows the orange line, that means there's not a lot of galaxies that are really far away. Wah, wah. If it follows the blue line, it means we're gonna have a lot of galaxies. And so I think that this, this tension here, that's a big question that JWS2 will hopefully answer in within the next couple of months. And if not, then it'll have to take until we have some of our other deep fields, like the one I work on called Jades. But that's one of the big ones is, is what's happening at the early universe? You know, let's take this and make these giant error bars like the error bars over here that you can't even see, right? Oh, so exciting. Uh, do you think all JWC photo extends such gravitational lensing? No, this is this was chosen because it has this was like initially selected because it has uh, this crazy giant galaxy um, that like this. I'm hoping that molar deep fields don't have this because it is a pain in the butt to pull out the fluxes and brightnesses of all these because these galaxies are big, crazy, weird, warped things. Really complicated. I'm, I think these are really great because they allow you to look farther back because these are magnifying really distant galaxies. But I also think that like, man, I, I want non-gravitational lensing at first because of how complicated JWST data is. Is anything visible that aren't galaxies? Yeah, yeah, we got stars. Star, uh, star, 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 star. You can, you can see that we, we see the stars pretty well in the Hubble image as well. Ding, 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 ding. Um, but otherwise it's just galaxies. I think that that's all we've got. There's some weird ones. Like I do not understand this, this weirdo. It might be multiple galaxies, one and then two, and then maybe a third. I don't know. I don't know. It just, this is Captain N's galaxy right here. Here we can, we can add a little, we can be kind of silly, uh, right now. Uh, this is very stupid. <laughs> um, uh, I gotta go. I gotta have some dinner at some point, folks. This has been really fun, though. I really appreciate it. And you should, you know, I don't like and subscribe or whatever and, and, and wait until we see, uh, like, some of the, the future ones in the next uh, coming, you know, tomorrow. I'll probably stream some more and we'll look at some other stuff. Um, like it's a uh, it's a really exciting time in my life and in the life of astronomy and so like like you know there's a lot of fun stuff about on the horizon and tomorrow you're gonna see images like we were just talking about that I think are gonna blow your mind I'm hoping they blow my mind and like I know right well, hey uh, if you've got a name does anyone else have a name does they, that that like you know like here here uh, this is for you uh, where did I put that uh, you can screenshot this I'll get out of the way oh, whoops. for you I can get out of the way so you can screenshot that uh, yeah I need to see more too I need to see more too um, I'm really excited about all this it's it's really it it's incredible so tomorrow luckily this is the it's like Christmas Eve and Christmas where you know sometimes you well, if you are uh, practicing you know, and uh, celebrate Christmas. Sometimes you celebrate Christmas and open up one present on Christmas Eve, and the president opens it up apparently. Uh, and then some, and then the next day you get the real presents out of the tree. And so look forward to all of them tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna go and have some uh, dinner. Uh, you all have a wonderful evening. If you've got other questions, you can email me or follow me or send me messages. Follow me on Twitter uh, at Kevin underscore Hainline. Um, I need to always do this. I always forget to do this. Um, let's let's show you my Twitter. My Twitter is great. You should all follow me because it's. Uh, it's, it's fun uh, to follow me. I, I post a lot of astronomy stuff. Um, and it's, you know, Kevin underscore Hainline right here. You can see uh, I've been posting lots and lots of things showing off the, the galaxies and images. Uh, I have my, my post here. I also, if you did not watch my JWST video, which is at the top, uh, I've got this great video that like I'm really very proud of that really, you know, it's, it's really exciting and shows off the parts of the telescope and like my boss, who's Marsha Riki, here, here she is right here, Marsha Riki. She's the best. I had champagne with her last night to celebrate. Uh, but you should follow me on Twitter. Uh, I also am on Instagram, but, you know, my Instagram is just, uh, like, I don't know, every once in a while I post a thing here. Um, this this is this is my Instagram right here. It's just Kevin Hainline, uh, where I talk about this and, and post about other stuff. And 
my wife, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, really, just uh, have a great night, and I'll uh, see you all in the future. Uh, this is the most exciting thing. All right. Bye, everybody. Let's make sure that I stop streaming here. Boom. Oh my gosh, 